Hello friends, welcome back. Uh, so after a long gap, I'm once again starting another video. So this is the new format wherein I'm going to take a security topic and try to see how much deep dive I could do. But uh, with that being said, it won't be too much of a deep dive because I would like to keep these videos a uh, little bit short as well so that people do not uh, go astray. Um, so the agenda is going to be uh, about uh, DMARC, uh, SPF as well as DKIM because uh, SPF and DKIM together is actually required for DMARC to happen for email security. So what does DMARC stand for? DMARC stands for Domain Based Message Authentication Reporting and Conformance. So it's actually an acronym for such a long uh, words. Uh, list of words and uh, it's usually composed of three DNS records which are working together to ensure that emails originate from the authorized email servers. So uh, DMARC was formed via the open email authentication standards. Uh, it was founded in 2012 by over 20 companies like Bank of America, Google and Return Path. So, uh, why exactly do we need a new standard? It's because 91% of cyber attack starts with a phishing email as per the link given here. And uh, it's true that in most of my incident response work, the genesis of the attack is usually a phishing related attack. Um, then the solution which is being presented here is with respect to DMARC and the way in which DMARC prevents these phishing emails is by preventing the attackers from, re from, from trying to spoof the mail from header or reply to header. So to give an example, say if you were to get a normal email from your, what to say email. So let's, let's uh, rewind a little bit, right? The email concept was adapted directly from the traditional mail system which we have here uh, even now uh, for the matter of fact right the post I mean uh, when somebody sends you a post it, you really do not know who exactly sent the post it could really be the person who was intending to send the post or somebody could have spoofed the particular person's name and still be able to send you a post right so that's exactly the concept why we are not able to prevent phishing and other related attacks uh, spoofing related attacks uh, that well over email so in order to prevent all those things uh, this standard called DMARC came into picture so for example if your school were to send you a, a post to your house uh, probably they could send it over letterhead. So with the advent of laser printers and inkjet printers, the school letterhead could very well be replicated. What's the next thing, right? They could put a seal, schools, schools seal on the particular letter. So that would be pretty hard to replicate, uh, provided the resource probably people would be able to do. Say if they have another seal, right that's going to be even more difficult so you see how they are upping the standard over there right so likewise you can also up the standard in the digital world which with the help of DMARC and uh, what is DMARC ineffective against is uh, say if your authorized email itself is compromised then uh, uh, the attacker could use the compromised email to send an e send an email out which looks exactly like the true one or the legitimate one so it's akin to saying that somebody breaking into your school trying to steal their letterhead their seal as well as their rubber stamp right and they could very well spoof an exact post as if it's coming from the school so that's something which dmark is ineffective against so then dmark's component uh, are usually DKIM, which provides a public key for authentication, encryption, and decryption. Uh, an SPF record which states that which server is authorized to send emails on behalf of that particular domain. Then the last one is DMARC record checks if both these pass before accepting the email for delivery. The next one is in order to implement DMARC in your environment, there are some key questions which you need to answer. The first one is what domains are we sending emails from? Then are we sending emails from more than one domain? Uh, 
say then what are the servers and service uh, from where we are sending email that could many times infrastructure team doesn't have a clue that they have an orphan infrastructure in their network which is sending out emails on behalf of them or it could be very well a simple scan to email function of your printer which is there in your office so as soon as you scan the printer itself would try to email the particular scan copy over to your email address which means that your printer has the capability of sending an email and you need to know about that to curtail uh, those things so that it goes to a centralized place from where the email goes out then uh, what are the name where are the name servers located and uh, do you have any say into what record gets added into that particular name server name server is nothing but dns server and you need to have the ability to write something inside the DNS server in order for the DMARC to take effect. And uh, to set the expectations right, uh, if you are starting with a DMARC project in your organization, uh, it, will, it will take you anywhere around like 8 to 10 weeks for it to get implemented properly. The next one is, uh, yeah, let's deep dive into each and every component of uh, DMARC. The first one is SPF. SPF is again an acronym which stands for Send a Policy Framework. What is an SPF is just a text record in, a, in your DNS a domain name server. So if you were to open your command prompt and uh, if you had typed ping google.com, what happens in the background is your command prompt asks what is the A record which is the address record for google.com which returns an at uh, IP address uh, from the DNS server and your system starts paying that particular IP. But here, uh, if I want to know the SPF record, I would rather ask what's a text record of that particular domain name is to a DNS server. Then the text record would return, which would be in a particular format, which I can look through to see if there are certain IP addresses which are authorized to send emails on behalf of a particular domain. So that's what is given here and the format usually looks like this v equal to spf1 uh, then include some particular domain name uh, so this is actually not a domain it's actually a pointer record then uh, minus all so the minus all would mean that uh, the above list is a hard fail list which means if the IP address is not included in this particular domain then outright deny the particular email do not accept it if it has a, a tilde uh, or approximate sign right which is above your tab key uh, and an all which means that okay i'll still accept the email but i'll mark the email saying that this has soft failed and there's a third variety which is question mark question mark all which means it's neutral and the mails would still be accepted so going on to the next one Okay, so the V actually stands for version here. So this is SPF version one. Then, yeah, so this particular record over here, right? The text record cannot cross over 455 characters. So your text record needs to be short and sweet. Uh, you can very well use a website like spfwizard.net to uh, come up with your own text record for your organization. And if there are several IPs, try to represent them in a CIDR format so that instead of listing out each and every IP in a net block, you can just list out that entire net block itself, right? Which would send out email. Then uh, it was also ad advising to create an underscore SPF subdomain and add all the IPs in there. By default, a uh, receiving email server would do only around like 11 lookups for those domains to resolve them to an IP. Say for example, this include spf.protection.outlook.com. When, when we try to look up this, it can resolve to netblock1.outlook.com, netblock2.outlook.com, netblock3.outlook.com. So all those three domains need to be resolved once again. So which means like there are, there are four uh, lookups which are already being used up. So SPF lookups can go only up to a maximum of 11 lookups, nothing more. So if it's more then uh, SPF check is not going to happen. The next one is with respect to uh, DKIM. So did I finish everything? Yes. So once you create your SPF record, you can go to DMARC analyzer, SPF checker to see if your SPF is written appropriately. The next one is with respect to DKIM. DKIM is once again an acronym which stands for domain key identified mail. 
So this is again another text record in your DNS server and uh, say for example if a.com is trying to send a mail to b.com the receiving mail server b.com would ask your DNS server which is a.com what is your DKIM key public key so the DKIM public key can be retrieved from the DNS server and uh, checked against the encrypted message which it has received and if the hashes were to match in the header then it can consider that yes the mail did in fact originate from the place where it's supposed to originate from and I can accept this email with a high degree of certainty. The next one is with respect to the steps which are involved in setting up a DKIM. Depending on whether you are using G Suite or Office 365, there are specific and unique steps for each. And while creating the domain key, uh, th there is a text string which gets created. Please uh, note down the particular text string which is called as a selector prefix which we would require in the DKIM configuration. So DKIM config generation and configuration uh, is n number of steps and it's different for different service providers uh, but the end concept is the same. So these links provide you the correct uh, way of creating uh, DKIM generation, key generation if you are using their service. Uh, I would uh, recommend that you go through those links. After you have created that, you can test your DKIM configuration if it's appropriately configured by going to these two links and verifying that you get verified. So now that you have completed your SPF and DKIM uh, configuration, now let's dive into something called as DMARC. So DMARC contains several parts to, its, to it which is called as tag. DMARC is once again a text record in your DNS. DMARC usually starts with V equal to DMARC1 which is version 1 of DMARC and p equal to none which means the policy setting can be none quarantine or reject so then the next one is rua address which is the mail to which aggregated report would be sent to if the email server did not accept emails which belong to your domain so there are certain fields which are mandatory like the v and p and other domains which are not mandatory so pct uh, I would have explained in the next one, I guess. Yes. So V stands for version and it's always set to DMARC1. P is for policy, which is set for none, which is least rest restrictive, which means the policy is not going to be applied there. Then Q is for quarantine and R is for or reject outright. Uh, it's not R, it's reject as a whole. Outright refusing the email. Then RUA is the place where is is again a uh, sort of an... U uh, acronym which stands for reporting uniform resource identifier uh, so this one would send an aggregated report saying that these are the emails which I received on behalf of your domain but I did not accept because they failed your uh, SPF or DKIM tests something like that so then you go ahead and try to investigate who sent that email and try to uh, fix those particular issues so then the last one which I forgot to explain in this particular uh, tags is something called as the PCT tag uh, which is the percentage of emails for which I would like to apply the policy on to. So initially I would try to apply the policy on a very less percentage of emails then as my confidence grows in the system I would keep increasing the policy till I hit 100%. Then DMARC implementation, yeah, the first three weeks we set the DMARC of uh, policy to be none and we also set a RUA mail address so that if the emails were to be rejected uh, or if the emails would be rejected because I would set a quarantine in the next leg, I would receive an email over here. Then in the fourth or fifth week change the none to a quarantine and add in another field called PTC, PCT. Uh, which is equal to 1. So, the quarantined uh, policy would get applied to just 1% of emails being received by the receiver mail servers. Then, uh, 8 weeks into the particular implementation, you can go ahead and change the quarantine to reject. But before doing that, you must, you may want to increase the percentage from 1 to 5 on to 10 percentage on to 25 then 50 and 100 percent to ensure that none of the mails are getting quarantined then go on to reject when you go to reject once again change the percentage to 1 then go to 5 10 25 50 and 100 
So, um, I read this particular uh, information using this particular URL whimsical.com. So, I would request you to kindly go through this particular link to see how exactly things are set up over there too. So, with this we come to the end of uh, this particular information security uh, episode. Thanks a lot for watching this video. If you like the video, please share it with your friends as well. Bye-bye.